Finance Minister Tito Mboweni is expected to deliver what most experts have dubbed the toughest budget since 1994. The midterm budget projected a fiscal deficit equal to 5.9% of GDP for the 2019-2020 financial year. This, however, may have worsened due to lower tax revenue collections and weaker growth expectations. With bigger holes to plug, Mboweni did warn that new taxes will be announced. So what's potentially on the cards? Saika's National Tax Committee Chair and partner at BDO, David Varnica, joins us now. Thanks so much, David, for joining us okay. uh, this evening. So, plunging government revenue expected to see that budget deficit expand to 5.9% in the current fiscal year, averaging 6.2% over uh, the next three years. Does government have no choice but to rely primarily on taxes to narrow that gap right now? Yes, I think that's probably correct, unfortunately, and I think actually that from the medium-term budget policy uh, date to the current date, the things might have actually worsened quite considerably because, as you alluded to, the economy has been weak, and if you look at the latest data coming in on tax collections, I think there's going to be even more of a, of a gap to plug. How so much more? Where are your forecasts? I think it could be anything up to 17 billion of additional shortfall. So from the 52 billion at medium term budget, we could be looking at anything from 65 up to almost 70 billion of a shortfall. So it's, it's quite considerable. Okay. The 2019 budget, of course, announced that 10 billion rand uh, will come through from tax increases in the full year 2021 period, with full details to be revealed in uh, this year's budget. Do you see that then undoubtedly having increased in tandem? Yes, I think so. So I think that, you know, I think if you start with, uh, um, with the uh, premise that as announced at medium term budget policy uh, stage, in 2019 that we're going to probably be uh, aiming towards a, a, a balance on the on the budget by 2023 and given that expenditure is very difficult in the current political climate to reduce mm -hmm. in particular the public service wage bill is very difficult to reduce um, I think that the only you know one's got no alternative but to try and boost revenue so the way that one does that is either by increased efficiency or by raising taxes. Okay, and raising taxes seems to be uh, the easier route, if we can call it that, for now. Further increases in personal income tax are likely on the cards. How hard ca do you see that being pushed? Can it be pushed? I don't think that we're likely to see an increase in the rates for personal income tax. Personal income tax is already very, very high by a whole lot of measures. Uh, there's also evidence that the collections from that are declining. And I think an increase in the rate, if you take the top rate, for example, and an increase to very close to 50%, I mean, we're 45% at the moment, I think is likely to be counterproductive. I think we've got to bear in mind that we've got a very uh, low number of taxpayers in South Africa that bear a very large proportion of personal income tax. Uh, so one doesn't want to see them... Uh, either leave South Africa or choose to stop working, etc. But I think that those are the two likely things that might result. So I think what is more likely than an increase in the rate of personal income tax might be further uh, bracket creep, which we've seen, of course, over the past few budgets. Um, but on that side, I think that we are likely to see a less than full inflationary adjustment this year again. Yeah. In, in, in the bands. This, of course, David, as SARS progresses with its own rehabilitation, what are you making of the kind of stride we're seeing there and the extent to which that could work to boost tax buoyancy down the line? Well, I think that we're quite encouraged by what we're seeing at SARS, and I think that the new commissioner is a breath of fresh air in terms of that. And it's, uh, although having said that, it's very difficult to get the experienced personnel that were lost previously back uh, and to replace them with, with equivalent, uh, you know, uh, people at the same level. Um, but there's no doubt that if one increases the efficiency mm -hmm. uh, of collections within SARS, that could play a major part of trying to make up the shortfall. And yeah. so, so we're very hopeful that that is going to be meaningful. But it's very difficult to quantify the effect of that. Yeah.
over the, over the, com over the coming years even. So what are some of the potential indirect taxes that could be lifted here? We've had some make very bold uh, calls for a percentage point rise in the VAT uh, rate. Are you amongst those sitting in that camp or is it just too soon having increased VAT by one percentage point already in 2018 for the first time in 25 years? Well, I think that there are not really too many alternatives to increasing the, the VAT rate. So I do think that that is likely. Um, it's not, it's, as we all know, it's very politically difficult to increase the VAT rate. But having said that, you know, if you look at alternatives, the other possibility is the fuel levy, which mm -hmm. operates very similar to VAT in many ways. Uh, the, the thing is that with the fuel levy, we've also seen big increases come through in that. And uh, the last time the, VAT, uh, the, the fuel levies increased, there was also quite a, a big political fallout from that. So I, I think that one of the big advantages of VAT is the very efficient tax in terms of collection. So if you raise VAT by a percentage point, and then bearing in mind our VAT rate is actually relatively low. Yeah. So it is the one tax that looks relatively low by comparison with other similar developing countries to, uh, compared to South Africa. And it is quite efficient in terms of, you know, one could, for example, get something around 23 billion rand by one percentage increase in the VAT rate. Mm -hmm. So I do think that that is likely to, to happen. Yeah. Okay, well, let's leave it there, David. Of course, this as we anticipate uh, Finance Minister Tito Mbawini taking to the podium and delivering that budget for 2020. It's been a pleasure chatting to you this evening. Of course, that's SICA's National Tax Committee Chair and Partner at BDO, David Varnica. The Budget Day was brought to you by SICA. We believe that to add value to a nation is to add value to its people.